Hello, everyone, and welcome to the class. This is David A. Cox, the founder and CEO of PCClassesOnline.com. We have a live audience with us today, and today we're going to be talking about syncing your stuff with iTunes. Uh, this is how you can have things that are on your computer, whether it's music or photos, movies, etc., all sync with your iPhone, iPod, or iPad. Now, uh, today is the Saturday class, which is when we always record our classes. I have already taught this class this past Wednesday, and when we did it then, we did it with an iPod, and I just realized, you know what, this class really does, it seems to teach better when I'm using a little bit of a better device. So we have an iPad right here, which I have just restored, so it's uh, factory conditions. It's actually an iPad 1. Remember those? All of those like four years ago, but it feels like it was ten years ago. So um, I'm going to be teaching you today how to sync your stuff with an iPad. Now, as I said, we do have a live audience here. This live audience can interact with me during the class. They can ask questions. Um, one of the things I want to throw out there quickly to the live audience is if uh, you guys don't mind my asking, are you for your computer, are you on a Mac or a PC? Pretty much everything I'm going to go over today is going to translate to both Mac and PC, except for one section, which I will go over uh, in how to do it with both. I just always like to know who is the majority uh, with this audience here. And it is almost, and I'm not even joking, it is almost entirely Mac. So great, excellent. Um, so let's get started here. So of course, your gateway between your iDevice, and please understand, I'm gonna be talking about the iPad today, but everything I teach you has, it's the exact same on the iPhone or an iPod Touch or an older iPod. So um, every, your gateway is iTunes in this whole process. So as I said, this is a restored iPad, iPad 1. I'm just going to hit continue here just to get it rocking and rolling. I had to actually charge this device because the battery had completely died before I did this. Now, you'll notice here we are in iTunes. Um, one of the things I always like to do during our live classes is I'd like to give you guys a few extra tips, even if it's maybe just a little bit off topic because it may help you. Um, one of the features that a lot of people, myself included, really missed about the most recent version of iTunes is when you first go into it, this bar that you see on the left-hand side is gone. So it'll actually look more like that, okay? And to get to this screen can be kind of a pain in the butt. The way you get out of it is you'll notice that we have up here, you know, all of our different file menu options. Go here under View and there's an option under view that says show sidebar. Adding that feature back just makes all of this, this entire process so much easier. So I really strongly recommend that you do it. So if you look here on the left hand side of my screen uh, in iTunes, we have a category here called devices and appropriately we have our iPad called PC Classes Online's iPad and uh, at a incredible 21% battery life. And this is going to be where you're going to tell iTunes exactly where it's going to pull its information from. Now, before we can go into this, what I want to do is I want to show you how I do this myself. Because here's the thing. A lot of us have a lot of music, for example, on our computers. Do you need all of that music with you at all times? Probably not. So what I want to do is show you what I do personally and what I recommend to the clients who I work with personally one-on-one, -on -one, both individuals and businesses. So the idea is that when you're traveling, maybe when you're going to the gym, you, there's only really some of that music that's on your computer that you really would like to have access to at all times. And the easiest way to organize this is to use playlists. Now, excuse me for just one second here. I'm going to um, actually delete one a playlist here, which I used to teach the other day so I can recreate it. Okay, so if you look at the top left of iTunes here, at the top left we have the library, and under the library we have music, movies, you may have a few other categories. You may not have all of those necessarily depending on what you do, but the most important one is music, of course. So this is where you're going to find <clears throat> all of the different songs that you have in your computer, at least the ones that are organized into iTunes. So the easiest way to create a playlist is think about this. Apple uses a lot of psychology when they're creating these different programs. If I said to you the words, you want to add a playlist, what symbol do you immediately think of? Add, addition, plus. Okay? And if you look at the bottom left-hand corner of iTunes, you'll see here that we have a little plus symbol. For those of you who are on a Mac, you know that this is very consistent through all the different programs on the Mac. 
So we're going to click on that little plus symbol. There's a couple of different types of playlists you can create here, but the most important one is just the first one, which is a new playlist. Now when you click on that, it's going to create a untitled playlist. And as you can see here at the top left of iTunes, you know what, give me one second here. I'm actually going to make my cursor just a little bit larger so that you guys who are here live right now can see this a little bit better. I know that was a request we got in last time. Okay. So when you click on text, just like you would in a folder or a document, and you highlight it as it is right now, you can type over it. So I can call this playlist whatever I want. And uh, you saw the example I just deleted, which was called Gym Music, so I'm now going to recreate it. So this is going to be for music when I'm, when I'm at the gym working out. Okay. So currently you see there's nothing here in this list under Gym Music. So what I'm going to do is I have to tell iTunes what is going to go in there. And to get back to my music, I have to go back here to the top left-hand corner of iTunes, back to the Music Library. And at this point, you can go through here and you can drag whatever content you want from this list into Gym Music. Another quick question for the live audience right now. Uh-oh. A few people, sounds like they lost my audio. Is it back now? Sounding good? Okay. I'll have to check that out when we go into post-production. Hopefully I won't have to recreate this whole video now. <laughs> oh, live classes. So, uh, quick question for the audience here. Does everyone know how to select multiple items? If one person says no, I will go over it. So, yes, you know how to do select multiple items. Okay, I already see a no, so we're going to go over it really quickly. Again, the majority of the people here are Mac owners, so I'm going to go over it for Mac. Just understand that when I say the word command on a Mac, if you happen to be on a PC, instead of the command key on your keyboard, you have a, a key called control, and that's what I mean. So anywhere on the computer, universally, okay, whether you're in the mail program, iTunes, iPhoto, doesn't make a difference. If I want to select random objects and I want to do something to all of them, for example, here, if I want to move this song and this song and this song all into my playlist, you would hold the command key and click on each one of them. Okay? And you'll notice that as I do that, they all highlight. That's only when they're not in any real, you know, they're not in an order. Okay? So now what I would do is with those items highlighted, I can click and hold on any one of them that's already highlighted and I would drag them and drop them into my playlist. Now here on the left hand side called Gym Music. Now the alternative way to do this is a list. So let's say I want to take this entire album by the band Fun, great band. I can click on the first one, hold the shift key, PC owners, this part is identical, and now click on the last item and you'll notice that everything in between is highlighted. So when you have a giant list of items, whether it's emails that you want to clear out, you would click on the first, hold the shift key, click on the last, and uh, then you, in that case, you'd theoretically delete it. In this case, if I want to bring all of these in, I would drag them and again, drop them right into my playlist. So you can do this for as many playlists as you want. There is no limit to how many songs you can have in any playlist, so you can go nuts. When you're in the playlist, right now you can see here we have, let me add just a few more songs here so we have a little bit better variety. Okay. I'm not really paying attention to what I'm clicking on. I'm just grabbing a bunch of random songs. Okay. And bringing them all in here. You'll notice that they're in the order that I just dragged them into this playlist. But what if I want them when I play them on my iPad or other device? What if I want them to play in a very specific order? Well, that's actually very simple. You can just drag these and drop these into the position that you want. So, for example, let's say I want the song We Got the World by Icona Pop to be the very first song in my playlist. All I have to do is click, drag it to the top of the list, and drop it there. And it's going to synchronize that way with my device. So you can do that too. Now, as you go and you start creating all of these different playlists, now's the part where we're going to start to tell the computer which of these playlists, if not all of them, are we going to sync with your device. 
And to do that, we need to go back here on the left-hand side in iTunes, it says Devices. And if you look at the top of this window, we have all of these different categories. Now, you're only going to see the categories based on what your device supports. So for example, if you're on an older iPod, you will not see books. And you will not see TV shows if it's an older one. But on most of the new devices, this is what you're going to see. So the first tab we have here is the summary, and this is where you can kind of tell it um, the different options for backing up and syncing. One of the options I want you to pay attention to is this down here towards the bottom. Under the category Options, it says right here, Sync with this iPad over Wi-Fi. So what that means is that as you make changes to your different playlists, you will not necessarily have to have the device plugged into your computer for those changes to take effect. Okay, so this is, as I said, this is a iPad that I'm using purely for demonstration purposes. I'm not going to click it, but for all of you, I would recommend it. Also, you'll see here your option for where your iPad backs up. Now, here's the thing. For the most part, I tend to actually recommend that people back up to their computer. The reason being is that iCloud backups take up a lot of space. I can understand it in certain, um, if you're a business person, if you do a lot of traveling, maybe without your computer, um, and if you drop your phone into a puddle, you can go into an Apple store, buy a new phone, sign in with your iCloud data, and it comes right back. Otherwise, by using this option right here, it just means that in order to bring back your data, you're going to have to plug it into your computer. For me, that's what I do, but all of you can choose what's best for you. Now at the top here, we're going to now go into music, which is in this case the third category. And you'll see here we have a little box to check to sync music. Now this computer, again, is purely for demo purposes. So while this computer only has 118 songs, many of you are going to have a lot more than that. And just by checking this box, this, is, this bar you see at the very bottom is going to completely fill up. But that's because you don't need all of the music that's on your entire computer. And if you don't have a lot of music, yes, this is definitely an option, but I'm speaking for the majority, which is that most people have more music than what will fit onto an iPod or an iPad, depending on what size you have. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to switch this option right here where it says Entire Music Library, and instead we're going to go to Selected Playlists, Artists, Albums, and Genres. Now you can do this however you want, but again, I'm showing you the way that I do it and the way that I recommend it for my clients. So now what I can do is you'll see here under Playlists, we see the exact same playlists as we have over here on the left-hand side. So what I can do is just simply check Gym Music, hit Apply down here at the bottom right-hand corner of iTunes, and that's it. It's going to sync those changes. Now what happens if down the road I add music? Well, it's going to all of those changes are going to synchronize to my device, including deleting. So if I delete a song from a playlist in iTunes, it's going to delete it from my iPad. Now, one thing I always like to make very clear to people, let's say I'm here back in, uh, let's, we'll apply those, that's okay. Let's say I'm here in this playlist again called Gym Music. And, you know, time goes on and I'm not so in love with the song I Love It by Icona Pop anymore. Well, if I delete this song, it is going to give me a warning, and I can I recommend you check this Do Not Ask Me Again because it can get annoying. What I want to make very clear is when you delete a song from a playlist, you are not deleting it from your computer. You're just deleting it from the playlist. Essentially, all a playlist is is a reference file. So it's saying, oh, this song is also available here. So adding a ton of music to different playlists does not add any additional storage to your computer, or rather take away storage from your computer. Okay, but it is going to sync that change with my device. So that's music, okay? Now what I want to do is I want to talk about some of the other features that a lot of people are concerned with when it comes to syncing data. And probably the number one item after music is photos. Now, this is where it gets to be a little bit different between Mac owners and PC owners. And here's the big difference. See, on a Mac, it comes pre-installed with a lot of different software that a PC does not come with. For example, iPhoto. iPhoto is basically like a digital shoebox for organizing all of your photos. It's very user-friendly. We have tons of classes on iPhoto. You can find them all, of course, on our website. 
but on a PC, you don't have that. So on a Windows computer, you have a folder called photos or pictures, I can't remember which. Um, and what you can do is create in that folder different folders that you can synchronize with iTunes. But right now I want to show you how to do it on a Mac. So let's go here into my iPhoto library. Give me one second while I just set this up. Again, I just taught this same class a few days ago. So just like with photos, a lot of us out there have just tons and tons of photos. Some of you may have thousands and thousands of photos. Do you really need all of them with you at all times? Probably not. Again, here's what I do. Of my thousands of photos, I have an album that I created called My Best Work. And I just manually go through my library, find those photos, and I create an album the exact same way that you would do it in iTunes. Um, I create another album maybe for friends of photos of myself with my friends. So, uh, and you can do as many of these as you want. So to create an album in iPhoto, here's how you do it. First of all, make sure you're not clicked on any in particular photo at this point. You're going to go to File at the very top left of iPhoto. And the very first option is New Album. Okay? It's going to give you this little warning because you have not selected any photos. Don't worry about it. Hit Continue. And just like we had in iTunes, we have an untitled album, which I'm now going to call My Best Shots and hit enter to lock it in. And now, just go back into photos. Does this sound familiar? It's exactly the same method. And you're going to select whatever photos you want. That trick that I showed you earlier about selecting multiple images also applies in iPhoto. And you can now drag them and drop them into, oops, sorry, I let go, into that particular album. Create as many albums as you want. Um, the only thing to know with photos is obviously photos do take up a decent amount of space. So you just have to make sure that when you go to synchronize this with whatever device you have, that you have adequate storage. So make sure you have that. So we've done that. We've created the album. And now I can just totally quit out of iPhoto. Going now to sync it, again, iTunes is the gateway from computer to the device. So now back here in iTunes, back clicked on our device, we go back up here to the top, and now we go to Photos. And just like we had with music, we're going to click Sync Photos from iPhoto. Now, PC owners, instead for you, this is what it would say. It would say Sync Photos from Pictures, which is just a folder. You can create subfolders. Um, and then put those photos in. That will do basically the same thing that I've just shown here on a Mac. It's a little bit more labor intensive, but it will do basically the same thing. And just like we did here, instead of syncing all of the photos, we're only going to do selected albums. Okay? So now you'll see here we have that album that I created called My Best Shots. And again, down at the bottom right, we have Apply. Very, very simple to do. Now, there's other things that you can also synchronize with something like an iPhone or an iPad, uh, such as movies and TV shows. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. See, when you sync movies, you can either, it can be a movie that you created yourself using software like Final Cut or iMovie, but you can also sync other types of movies. Let me give you a couple of examples here. Let's say you are going on a plane flight and you don't want to have to watch you know, old reruns of Frasier while you're on the flight. One of the things I do when I travel is a lot of times I will rent a movie through iTunes, sync it to my iPad, and then I've got all my entertainment waiting for me for when I get on the flight. Here's how you do that process. What you're going to do for that is you're going to actually go up here into the iTunes store. Okay, In the iTunes store, just like we had when we were in the iPad, you have categories up here at the very top. Almost, almost the exact same categories too. And so here, I can go into movies, for example. Now, not every single movie are you able to rent, um, but most of them you are. And so let's say, for example, I want to rent the movie Frozen. Okay, I can just click on that. And you'll see here there are two options. I can buy it for $20. Who buys movies anymore? Or I can just rent it for $5.99. And that's the high def version. If you want to save a dollar, 
Down here you'll see HD and SD, SD standard definition. You can save a dollar and rent it for five dollars right there. So when you click this button, here's how the, the rental situation works with iTunes. It's really important that you not start playing the movie until you're ready to actually watch it. When you rent a movie through iTunes, you have 30 days to watch it. But once you start watching it, you have 24 hours to finish it. So again, make sure if you're going on a flight on Saturday and it's Wednesday, if you download it today, that's fine, but don't play it because then it's going to start the timer. By the time you get on the plane, it's going to auto-delete itself, so you're not going to be able to watch it. Okay, so when you do rent it, it's going to go into this category right here. You see we have movies at the top left of iTunes, and there's a whole bunch of different categories here. We have unwatched movies, home movies, example would be you know uh, things that you have created in iMovie or just a list, which is probably the easiest way to access it. So just like we would there, we would go into the iPad, go up here to Movies, and we would tell it to exactly what to sync. Now usually with this, if you have a few different movies in your computer, let's say you have gotten into iMovie, you may not want to bring everything. So in this case, you can just kind of, there would be a list of items here, and you can just manually check exactly what you want. Actually, what I would do is I would not check this box here that says automatically include. That way, you'll see each little icon right here that represents every project and just check it as you want to sync it. But obviously, video takes up the most space of anything on the iPad, so try to not put too, too much onto your device. Okay. Um, TV shows, basically same thing. Uh, great little trick. I've taught quite a few of my clients with TV shows. Is let's say you like HBO, but you don't want to pay for HBO. One of the little ways that you can get around it is back here in the iTunes store. There's something called a season pass where you can, let's see if I can find just a shortcut. Let's just go back into the gen, uh, generic TV shows. If you go into the TV shows part here, you can scroll down and you'll notice at the bottom right, it says premium cable. You can actually get a pass to one particular show. So for example, let's say I'm really into the uh, show Game of Thrones, okay, but I don't want to pay for HBO every single month. Instead what you can do is you can pay, let's see how much this one goes for, 38 bucks, and every single time a new episode comes out, it will automatically download to your computer, and then if you want, you can transfer that onto something like an iPad but it's uh, significantly less expensive than paying for HBO month after month after month after month if this is the only show that you care about. Now, if you watch multiple shows, eh, you may be better off with just buying HBO. Um, also, other things that you can sync are podcasts. Now, podcasts um, also you access through the store, and a podcast is similar to a radio program, although they do have some video podcasts as well. Um, they've kind of declined as far as popularity goes in the last few years. For those of you who didn't know this, uh, PC Classes Online actually originally started off as a podcast under the name of Tech Talk America. You can probably still find old episodes of ours floating around out there on the internet. But uh, for me, it just didn't work because you, you really can't teach technology through audio only. But for shows like This American Life, uh, for those of you in the United States, I think they have great storytelling that they offer. Um, another great one is, you know, the TED Talks. They have an audio version of it. Um, also, Freakonomics, a very popular one right now. But these are all free. All podcasts are completely free. And so you can subscribe to them. When a new episode comes out, it automatically downloads. The process of syncing it to your device is the exact same. Up here you have a category for podcasts. Now, one thing I do want to touch on is apps. Now, believe it or not, apps I personally don't recommend syncing. And here's the reason why. Most people, when they go to buy an app for their device, will not buy it on their computer. So when you, because it's just easier to buy it from your device. You go into the app store, whether it's on your phone or your iPad, and you just buy it there. So syncing apps seems to be, I think, is kind of pointless because here's the thing about all of these different features. When you buy music, 
when you buy a book, when you buy a movie, a TV show, music, or an app, all you're actually getting is a license. And this is something that actually came up during the question segment last week. What happens if my device goes kaputski? Okay, what happens if I drop it in a puddle if I don't have a backup of that data? Well, here's the thing. When you buy a license, it's just it. It's a license. You can get it back. And the way you can get it back is you have to go here into the iTunes store, click on this little house icon that you see at the top of iTunes. That's just kind of the home screen. And if you look over here on the right-hand side under Quick Links, second option down is Purchased. So that will show you everything you have ever purchased on iTunes. Music, movies, TV shows, apps, etc. All of it's there. So if something ever happens, you can always go back and get it. Um, just a good thing to know. Uh, one other thing I do want to give a quick shout out to. Again, this may sound a little bit off topic, but I think it's important for people to know about. I get questions from people who they have like one of those really, you know, the old school iPods with the click wheel and it's got just tons and tons and tons of music and then their computer breaks and they say, oh my God, how do I get the music from my iPod back to my computer? Here's the thing. iTunes only allows you to go one way. They allow you to go from your computer to your iPod, but not the reverse. The reason why is it's a combination of licensing reasons and also fear of hacking. Because otherwise, if you could do that, I could say, hey, buddy, come on over to my house. Let me download all of your music to my computer. Illegally, of course. So what I'm about to show you, could it be theoretically misused? Of course. But as you all know, I am anything but the moral police. The trick I want to show you very quickly, oops, this is from when I was teaching the other day. The trick to go in the reverse order is there's a piece of software called Senuti, S-E-N-U-T-I, made by a company called FadingRed.com. The exact address is Fading, F-A-D-I-N-G, Red.com, slash Senuti, which is spelled S-E-N-U-T-I. Okay, and this is the way to reverse the order. So if you are in a crisis, this is how you do it. It's a it's free to, to transfer a thousand songs. More than that, nineteen dollars flat flat rate. So I always like to throw that out there. So that's basically how you transfer this data back and forth. Um, I'm just looking really quickly at the questions that are coming in and seeing if there's anything here that I want to include in. Um, if there's anything I want to include in the recorded class. Uh, Deborah asked a question, I think I probably just answered this, about if you delete a movie, uh, can you go back and retrieve it? If it's a movie that you purchased through iTunes, yes. You can delete it when you're done watching it, and then at any point in time, go back into the iTunes store, go here to purchased, and you'll be able to see it. I'm not going to go in there right now because you'll all laugh when you see what music I listen to, but then again, you've all probably figured that out. So... My musical taste is somewhere between a teeny bopper and a Broadway baby. Does that say a lot? Yes, it does. Anyways, so now that you've all lost all respect for me, let me end the class here that's being recorded. I'm going to go to the questions uh, that people have who are here live and uh, hopefully help them get up and running. For those of you who have been enjoying this class either on our website or on iTunes, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm, watch I'm looking at the word iTunes, or on YouTube, uh, one really, really easy way you can always support us is you can like our videos on YouTube and, of course, hopefully join our service. We are completely free, uh, open public service. Anyone in the world can attend our classes, as all the people who are here live will attest to. So thank you for joining us. Those of you who are here live, stand by, and we'll get to your questions in just a moment.